or television, and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, send your phone number, send your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this number, plus 234 915-444-9263. Again, plus 234-915-444-9263. Do that so that we're able to follow you up in your new work with the Lord. There will be a special meeting, believers class, for all those who gave their life to Jesus during this program. The program will come up one hour before the crusade starts tomorrow. For here, it will be by 4 p.m. at Most Purpose Hall. Therefore, make sure you come earlier so that you don't miss out. This should also be carried out in our nations, our states, and regions. Listen to this announcement. For online converse rally, there will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their life to Christ, and this will be on Sunday, 4th of June. 2023. More details about this will be sent to you. Our person will be delighted to have you to join this special banquet. So don't miss it. Don't be left out. For the fiscal converse here, there will also be a special fiscal banquet for those who gave their life to Christ from all physical locations in your group, in your region, in your state and nation. This comes up as well on Sunday, 4th June, 2023. Details will be communicated to you. We are still waiting for our counselors to attend to the converse who have just given their life to Christ. Remember to fill the form correctly, then give it back to our counselors. That's a package from the governor, and it will be given to you. Let's prepare our hearts as the man of God be coming for the prayer. While we are doing that, getting the forms filled, please keep praying, keep preparing your heart. Remember what Jesus said, that our healing tonight is carry go, and you will carry go in Jesus' name. So as we are attending to the converse, both here and in other locations, let's keep praying and preparing our hearts for the powerful prayer of miracle tonight. You will carry gold in Jesus' name. We are waiting for the counselors to quickly attend to the converse and collect the information so that we can receive the pack powerful prayer from Jesus tonight. You will carry go in Jesus' name. Let's make sure we complete the form correctly, giving proper 
correct information, they never lost a thing to you. And in all other locations in the states and nations, pertain to the converse and get all the information so that we can be able to follow them up. Remember, the phone number for the television and radio audience. So send your name, phone number, location address via SMS or WhatsApp to the number mentioned, plus 234-915-444-0010. C three again plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Do this to enable us be of help to you. We are waiting for the counselors to conclude attending to the converse as we expect the powerful miracle prayer tonight and is coming your way. Jesus Christ said, John 17, 1, the hour has come. And tonight, the hour has come. Are you ready? Wherever you are, this location, in the states, the regions, the hour has come. The hour has come. The hour has come. Your miracle is going home with you. Because it's going to be carry go. It's available, you carry go. It's ready, you carry go. The power is coming down, you carry go. Prepare your hearts. Get ready. Be expectant. And that miracle of your life is coming your way tonight. That miracle of your family will not miss you tonight. That your heart desire will be touched and the God of heaven will do something in your life. Prepare your heart. Praise the Lord. My time has come. Your time of miracle. Your time of healing. Your time of deliverance. The time of supernatural manifestation. Let the church say. I want you to hear the final amen. You will testify. I will testify. Now, you must understand and believe what you say. As we believe what he has said, he has said that everyone that calls upon him, he will answer. He even says, while we're still speaking, that the answer will come. And then when the final amen comes, I see the miracle on your life there. Where are you? Raise up that hand. I lay the other hand when you have the problem. Every kind of miracle will take place in your life today. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. God of power, God of love, God of mercy, God of forgiveness, and God of miracle, I pray, O oh Lord, touch everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever the sickness, whatever the disease, whatever the trouble, take everything away in Jesus' name. Those deaf ears be opened in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues be loosed in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes receive your sight right now in Jesus' name. The withered hand, stretch it out and be made whole. 
that short leg grow out now in Jesus name elephantiasis big leg you cannot even wear the right dress I pray the Lord will touch you right now and that leg or those legs will become normal in Jesus name every form of swelling hernia tumor fibroid hunchback whatever come out in Jesus name and all those demonic powers paths of darkness Militating against your life, walking against your life, I command that evil spirit, evil power with evil manifestation come out in Jesus' name. And I pray that every sickness in your body, every disease in your body, every ailment you have, the divine touch is upon you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm the miracle to the right, to the left, at the center, at the far back, everywhere here now at the Alpha location, those online, and those over the radio, television, anywhere you are, I pray the power of the Lord reach you where you are right now. Rise up and walk. Open your eyes and see, and let the creative power of God work a creative miracle in your life right now. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is confirmed. Lord, at this final amen, testimony in every mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord, it is done. It is done. It is done. Check up yourself, you see the miracle there. Those blind eyes are open, check up. Short leg growing out, check up. Deafness removed, check up. And all the things moving about, tormenting your life, tormenting your body, everything is gone. Now you have the peace of God that has settled in your body, in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, check up. And as you see that God has done it, now you're sitting on the wheelchair, you cannot keep on sitting there. You have to use your own strength and uh, which is given to you now and the healing there now and get up, you rise up and walk. Yeah. And as you see what God has done, you come out here and we rejoice together. Our yeah. right, kids state overseer now to moderate our testimony time. The miracle is there. Check up. The miracle. God bless you. Your mountain will move today. I say mountain move. Mountain get out of my way. It's out of your way already in Jesus name. Let's pray together, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your happy people, your blessed people, and your people who have seen the glory of the Lord, and the glory will penetrate into every life in Jesus' name. I pray every mountain will move. Mountain will get out of your way, and the glory of the Lord will shine before you in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. 
God bless you. God has blessed you already. You can sit down. We're talking about the wonders of perpetual promise and provision for all. Be the last day. We want, we desire, we pray that everything God has done, God will keep on adding to your life every day. And we pray that every good thing the Lord has done will be multiplied perpetually in every life in Jesus' name. And the wonders we have encountered, the God of wonders and the power and the wonder of the Lord that has shown in our lives, I pray it will continue in every life in Jesus' name. I'm talking to those who are still coming, who are just coming for the first time. I'm talking to people who have been coming, but they have not taken the decision so that this wonder will start in their lives. One is the commencement of the encounter of the wonder to the wonders of the Lord. Two, I'm talking to the people who have come to know the Lord. Now the joy of salvation is in them, and they have the peace of God, and they want to continue in that. Number one, I'm talking about the commencement of that wonder in your life. Number two, I'm talking about the continuation of the wonder in your life. Three, I'm talking to our fathers and mothers in the faith. I'm talking to our elders, our seniors in the faith. I'm talking to our colleagues, those who already have the faith, and they've started with the Lord all these many years, and they're still continuing today. And I want to focus your attention on the consummation, on the climax, on the final end, when we see the Lord face to face, or put everything together, we start, we continue, we finish well. You will finish well. And so we're talking on the wonders of perpetual promise and provision for all. In Isaiah chapter 53, we're reading verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Everyone can come, all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God, and we have gone away, but now we can turn back to the Lord, and we can receive the Lord as a personal Savior. And when He saves us, we find the sin, the guilt, the condemnation, the punishment, and the power of sin totally broken, everything laid on Christ. So I invite you, come. Then we're looking at uh, chapter 45 of Isaiah, verse 42. Look unto me, as now you are born again. Look unto him. You're about to be born again. Look unto him. You've been following the Lord for a long time. Don't look away. It's your looking unto him. Every time. It's your looking unto him in every situation. It's your looking unto him in every circumstance that has brought you this far. Look unto me and be ye saved. And be ye healed. That word saved is actually, how would I say, it's a word that has many meanings and connotations. In the New Testament, the word sozo in Greek, and it means to be healed, to be saved, to be delivered, and to be set free. It's a word that means quite a lot to everybody. And be ye saved, and be ye healed, and be ye strengthened, and be ye delivered. Look on to me, all ye of the earth, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. I am God, the God who saves. I am God, the God who heals. I am God, the God who delivers. I am God, the God that gives you grace upon grace upon grace so that you will be all you ought to be in your life. Look unto me and be ye saved. I be he healed, I be he delivered, I be he restored, I be he strengthened all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 11, in verse 11, for as the earth bringeth forth her birth, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it, 
to spring forth. So the Lord God will cause righteousness, will cause redemption, will cause uprightness, will cause holiness, will cause health, will cause blessing, provision, and praise to spring forth before all the nations. All the nations, you understand? The GCK is for all the nations, preaching the gospel to every creature in every nation. And we're moving on and moving on. And as you tell other people, and as you connect with other people, and as you alert other people in other nations, it says it's righteousness, it's redemption, it's power, it's provision will spring forth and I'll be praised before the Lord in all the nations. Once again, the topic today is the wonders of a perpetual promise and provision for all. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the conditional promise of God, the Almighty. The conditional promise of God, the Almighty. Number two, the conquering power of the glorious, of the glorious over our affliction. He is the glorious one, is the mighty one, is the one that cannot fail, and his power is not comparable to any other power below, above, or on earth. The conquering power of the glorious over our afflictions. Number three, the confident prayer of the godly for an answer. The prayer we pray, the petition we made. It says it's a confident prayer. We come boldly to the presence of God so that we can receive everything he has for us because you are godly and then you have brushed aside all sin, and you come with a free mind, and you come with a believing heart, you will have an answer. I will have an answer. You will have an answer. And if two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask of our Heavenly Father, through the name of Jesus, it will be granted tonight. Salvation granted tonight. Healing granted tonight. Deliverance granted tonight. And the power that breaks every yoke granted tonight for every one of us in Jesus' name. Number one, the conditional promise of God, the Almighty. I want you to look at um, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16. Wash you and make you clean. Wash you all the dirt, all the defilement, all the sin, all the transgression. There's a fountain flowing it from the it from the side of Christ, the blood of Jesus. And it says, Wash, come into the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can take the stain away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And he says that fountain of the blood of Christ is sacrifice that he made for you, that he made for everyone. You can come to that blood of the sacrificial lamb and there you'll be clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. What does that mean? Turn and then hide it from the Lord. No, you cannot hide anything from the Lord. Anything you do in darkness, anything you do in a hidden place, anything you do anywhere, night or day, even if you take your place in hell and you did it, he will see it. What it means is cancel that thing. Suspend that thing. Blot out that thing. And put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. There's grace available. Cease to do evil. And the power of the cross is able to crush and to destroy that evil tendency, evil life, evil, any kind of evil in your life. Stop. 
cease. Repent and have the salvation of the Lord, and then evil will not continue. Verse 17, in verse 17, learn to do well. After you are born again, you cannot be born again now, and then I don't have to read Bible, I don't have to, I'm saved, I'm saved forever, forever. He says, no, after you are saved, after you are cleansed, after the evil is gone, you will learn to do well. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. And then he says in verse 18, come, come now, come, come to the Lord every day. Come to the Lord every day. And you are washing in the blood every day. And you are being cleansed by the word every day. Have you noticed our lives? You know, we wash in the morning and we dress well and we go to the office and the office is air conditioned. Everything is nice. We're surprised. We didn't throw in the mud. And when we go to bath the following day and we wash, then we see that you know, some dirt is still being taken away from the body. What if we didn't wash? What if we said, I washed at the crusade? I washed at the GCK. And then we go on and on and on. And there's no cleansing of the word, no cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. And then one month, three months, one year, we're not reading the Bible. You'll see how dirty you will become. And you'll say, but I didn't go to rule in the mud. Yes, because we need to be cleansed by the word, by the cleansing power of the blood and the word. Every day we're coming to the Lord. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as college, if you are just coming for the first time to Calvary and to Christ and to the Savior, he says, if your sins be as college, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be be as well. Understand, I'm talking about conditional promise. Conditional promise. Where is the condition? Look at verse 19. In verse 19, if ye be willing and obedient. That's the condition. If ye be willing and obedient. He said, come, you're willing, you're calm. He said, cease to do evil. You're willing, you stop doing evil. He says, wash, and thou shalt be clean. And you're willing, and you're washed. And then you're coming to the watch every time and coming to the Lord every time and receiving his wonders every time if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. What if you are not willing? What if you say whether I pray or not, he will bless me. Whether I repent or not, it will save me. Whether I come or not, it will save me. Ah, uh -uh, that's the condition. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it says, but if, that's the condition, but if he refuse and rebel, he shall be devout with the sword for the mouth of the Lord, not I say him, for the mouth of the Lord, not a human being, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. He wants us to do as he has called us to do. All this crusade, we've been talking about coming to Christ and receiving the salvation of the Lord. If you come, then you are saved. Somebody said, even if you don't want to come, if you don't want to be saved, if you don't want to be blessed, the Lord will still bless you. Never. Don't say that again. If you come, if you are obedient, if you are willing and you do what the Lord has said, it's conditional. Only then will the Lord save. Only then will the Lord forgive. Only then will the Lord turn your life and your life will turn around in Jesus' name. Somebody will shout amen. Exodus chapter 15, 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, we're looking at verse 26, and said, if, look at that, that's the condition, if 
thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Hey. If, if you were listening to the promise he has given, if you were listening to the precept he has written, if you were listening to his call, to his voice, and then you do as he wants, he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be healed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be delivered. Hey. You are hearkening diligently unto the voice of the Lord our God. That the condition is a conditional promise. The promise of God, the Almighty. It tells us in Romans chapter 8, and I'm reading there from verse 11. In Romans chapter 8, we're looking at verse 11. Here is what the Lord himself has promised by the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul. And he still gives us the key there. Look at your Bible in Romans chapter 8 verse 11, if, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, if sin is not dwelling there anymore, if the immorality of the past is not dwelling there anymore, if the terrible, sinful, fleshly habit is not dwelling there anymore, if we have obeyed what the prophet had told us from the Lord, and he says that we clean up ourselves in the blood, and we cease to do evil, and all evil is gone, and transgressions are gone, and now the Spirit of God, who will not allow a vacuum in in your heart, if that spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies that his spirit, by his spirit that dwelleth in you, that abides in you, when the spirit is a spirit of life. Is the spirit of power, is the spirit of renewal, the spirit of revival, the spirit that quickens. If that spirit that revives, if that spirit that makes a new, if that spirit that gives us abundant life, if he abides in you, then it will quicken your mortal body. And every sickness and every infirmity will be taken away from there in Jesus' name. Amen. And then he tells us in, um, that, that is in 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 11. 2 Timothy chapter 2, we're looking at verse 11 there. And notice the word if in what we're reading. It says, it's a faithful saying, for if, 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 or be dead within, we shall also live within. You see all the promises of the Bible. You cannot just say, well, whether I do right or not, whether I go back to sin or not, whether I go back to my vomit or not, whether I go back to that evil habit or not, whether I go back to whatever it is, and God will say, bless me. No, that's a condition. It's a conditional promise. You have come, and you have known the Lord, and we are written your name, and we're willing to help you, and we're calling you for luncheon, luncheon with Christ, and they will want you also have the follow up. If you don't pull back, if you say, Yes, I raised up my hand for a purpose, yes, I turned away from my sin, yes, I believed on the Lord Jesus, yes, I plan to go on with the Lord Jesus, yes, I want to have all the help I can have so that I can remain with the Lord and in the Lord. Then it says, If we're the dead, we're sin, we're dead to the world. We're dead to our past life. We're dead to sins. We're dead to evil. And the evil and the sin, they do not have any hold, any attraction for us anymore because we're dead to them. It says, A, 
will be dead with him. Then we shall live with him. In verse 12, it says in verse 12, if, if, if that's the condition, we must plan to follow the Lord. We must make up our minds to keep on following the Lord. And every day and every moment, we're following the past that Christ himself has given us. And we're not, you know, still living in the old life. I know I shouldn't have done that. I'm doing that. I know I should do this, but I'm not doing it. That doesn't bring blessing. And that doesn't bring stability and steadfastness in the kingdom of God. You come in. When you are outside the kingdom, that's the way you used to live. Now you come in into the kingdom and you live the new life and you live the life of a child of God. Because it says if we suffer, we seem what does that mean? When you come to Christ, there may be those who do not understand this new way and this new life and this new faith. And this new way is beyond just going to church and going to church. This new way is beyond observing Easter and harvest and uh, Christmas. This new way is beyond the superficial life of the religious. But this new way is the way that makes us to live in newness of life. And your old friends will not understand. And therefore, they will persecute. They'll try to shake everything shakeable in your life. And then you say, that's the suffering is talking about. If they jeer at you, if they gossip about you, if they even spit in your face, if they even say things and do things to try to jolt you and to make you feel offended and feel unhappy and to make you feel, what am I being, what I'm being? But if you suffer the persecution, if you abide in the Lord, whatever anybody says, a mother, a father, a friend, a brother, a relation, whatever they do, if we suffer that persecution, we shall also reign with him. You will reign in Jesus' name. See so I shouted, I said, you will reign in Jesus' name. If you have your Bible there, look at the second part and understand heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God will not pass away. It says, if we deny him, if we deny him. You come to know the Lord as your personal Savior. You believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is your Savior. And now somebody confronts you. Uh -uh. We've not seen you in the gang, in the meeting at night anymore. What happened? Have you gone to those, uh, you know, crusades? Have you given your life to Christ? Are you saying now you are born again? Are you saying you are a child of God? If you deny him. In the family, extended family, they want to worship the idol. They're looking for, where is he? Where is she? And they're looking for your contribution. Have you paid your money? Have you not paid? Why? If you deny him, if you, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm coming back. And then you go and take money, God's money. Because everything you have now, you belong to God. The money belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. And you go to give God's money, your possession, to an idol. You deny him. It says, if we deny him, he also will deny us. You know, some those people that do not their Bible right side up, they say, once you come to Christ, whatever you do does not matter. If you go back to joint gang, it does not matter. If you go back stealing, it doesn't matter. If you go back pilfering, it doesn't matter. If you go on in fornication, adultery, it doesn't matter. They are liars. Here it says, hey, we deny him. He also will deny us. It's the conditional promise of God that now as we come to the Lord, as we believe in the Lord, a new life has come. And the grace of God is available. And we can go on following the Lord. You'll keep on following the Lord in Jesus' name. We're looking at First John chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 20. First John chapter 2 chapter 3 verse 20 
for if look at that if the condition if our hearts condemn us god is greater than our hearts and he knoweth all things. We shouldn't be going about doing things that bring guilt, that bring condemnation. We should live in newness of life. He that follows after Christ will not walk in darkness. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, beloved, if that's the condition, that's the condition, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. I pray you have confidence towards the Lord in Jesus' name. Because you removed your hand from evil. You removed your eyes from seeing evil. You removed your ears from enjoying taking pleasure in evil things. So remove every part of your body from doing evil, participating in evil. It says, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And in verse 22, verse 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So we learn that there's conditional promise, that the promises of God are, you know, to be, to be obeyed and to be accepted and to walk and fulfill the terms and the conditions of the covenant, of the promise of God Almighty and the Lord will bless your life all the way from now until the end in Jesus' name. And then those who are just coming today, you know you are coming in, uh, into something good. You are coming to the salvation of the Lord. If you leave darkness, if you depart from your sin, if you repent of your sin, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that condition is there. If, and it is that if that brings you out of sin and brings you to the Savior and you have the salvation of the Lord in your life. We're coming to point number two. In point number two, we're looking at the conquering power of the glorious over our afflictions. Over our afflictions. All, you, all your afflictions, the Lord will take away. Okay, all my afflictions, the Lord will take away. By the glory of his conquering power, it will take everything away in Jesus' name. Uh, look at the word of God. In the word of God, it tells us very clearly in Isaiah chapter 63. I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? with dyed garments from Bosra. This that is glorious in his apparel. You can tell he's talking about our Savior, the captain of our salvation. He's talking about our Redeemer. He's talking about our healer. And he says this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. And now he introduces himself I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. It's the Lord, and he says, he speaks in righteousness. And because he's righteous, whatever he says, it will come to pass. He doesn't lie. He doesn't defeat or deceive us. He is the truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if the Son the personification of the truth. The truth come from heaven. If the Son shall make you free, you'll be free indeed. Free. Completely free. Entirely free. Free in your mind. Free in your soul. Free in your spirit. Free in your body. Free from sin. Free from sickness. Free from satanic attack. Where are you? You're free. 
I said you're free because he is mighty to save. Mighty to save and mighty to heal. Look at chapter 38 of Isaiah. We're reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 38 and we're reading from verse 1. It says, In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. Seek and was at the very break of the grave. Seek and any day he will pack up and then it's gone. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Isaiah said, I have a heavy message to you from God. You know me. I said, I would have said, I prophesied that the Emmanuel will come. That's me. I prophesied, a son shall be given while the child is born. I said that, and I prophesied, this is what will happen. And now I come to you. God sent me to you. And God said, set your house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. What if somebody wrote a letter to you? And when they write uh, that letter, they say, finished. Life finished. Everything you want to do on earth, everything finished. And he said, I am a prophet. And it's no dream. And this is life. And um, he says, so you will die after you've come to the crusade. After you have the promises of God, then maybe somebody there will be shaking and they'll be going out. It's looking for a prayer house somewhere. It's looking for something somewhere. It's looking for another prophet that will reverse that. What do you need that for? Why don't you go to the Lord? If you have the Lord, you have life. If you have Jesus, you have life. Death, premature death, canceled in your life in Jesus' name. Hey, look at verse 2, verse 2 here, and Ezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. You know, a prophet might say, let us read your spring, I said it, you will die. He might say, there's no use calling upon the Lord, I told you the Lord sent me, you will die. Are you ready to die? Then why don't you leave them alone, those prayer houses and those people rubbing oil on your stomach and rubbing oil on your face and passing and take you to the side of the river they want to wash you. Why don't you just leave them alone and face our God? Our God will answer you. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and shall be open to you because everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh the door of promise, power, and the door of healing will be open to you in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, many people, uh, sometimes we even pray, 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 and pray, and we don't do what we, uh, what we need to do. I was in Ghana many, many years ago now, when we were starting the church deeper life there, and I finished, um, you know, I had crusade, and then in the morning teachings were at, you know, the believers came together, then I'll teach them the way of the Lord. After one of the morning sessions, I can remember, I even see that now in my mind side, this man came to me and he said, uh, Pastor, please pray for me. I said, what's the prayer about? He said, you know, somebody wrote a letter with red ink. And once I got that letter and I read it through, he became mental. And then those people that wrote the letter and made him mental like that, they went to his house and carried all his property. He was uh, insane. He had, uh, you know, brain problem. And he, uh, he lost all his property, lost everything. And he said, pray for me. I looked at him and I said, I'm going to tell you to do something. Go back home. Conditional promise of God. Go back home. All those charms you have there, all the various things you got from all those magicians, burn them up and then when you do that between now the morning and the evening when you've done that come back and i will pray for you he didn't argue he went back home and he gathered all those things together and he burnt them 
and when he burnt them, I'll tell you what happened. And then he came in the evening, uh, and he said, you know, and he said, uh, now, nah, and the man that came in the morning, yes, I know, I recognized you. I said, can I pray for you now? He said, no. I said, why? He said, the moment I burnt all those things, I became well. Memory came back, mind came back, sanity came back, health came back because he fulfilled the condition. You know, that's what what you do. Isaiah here had spoken to the man, and then Ezekiah did not say, Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. You're a child of God. Once you are born again, and he prayed unto the Lord. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, he said, Remember now, O Lord, we go to God in prayer and we say father remember christ remember my substitute remember the final sacrifice remember your only begotten son that you're saying you sent him to save me he made the sacrifice already remember and when you tell the father god in heaven the almighty to remember the sacrifice of christ your will be restored you will be healed. You will be delivered. Your salvation has come today. All you have to tell the Lord is, remember Calvary. Remember Christ, my Savior. Remember my Lord. And remember, he did the perfect, complete work of redemption for me. And when he remembers, you are healed tonight. If you are backsliding, you are restored tonight. If you are a fresh, fresh sinner, just coming from the jungle and forest of sinfulness, remember Calvary. You are saved tonight in Jesus. Jesus name. I want you to look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, in verse 5, go and say to Ezekiah, thus says the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Where are you? He has heard your prayer. Joy will come back again. Life will come back again. Salvation, restoration will come back again. Healing and deliverance and freedom will come back again. Thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add to thy days, tell me, 15 years. Now, the man did not pray for 15 years. He just wanted to be healed. That now, remove the sickness. Even if it's one month, two months, even if it's one year, you give me chance to live. And the man got more than he was asking for. You're going to get more than what you're asking for. You're asking for healing. They'll give you healing and health. You're asking for deliverance. He'll give you deliverance and dominion. You're asking for life. He'll give you life and he'll give you abundant life. He will give you more than what you are asking for. And we don't need to say, you know, pin Isaiah down and say, you said the Lord sent you and will die. Isaiah, tell me, if you need money, I'll give you money. I'll even buy a car for you. I will give you this. As, no, he turned to the wall and he prayed to the God. The God that can answer Isaiah will also answer Ezekiel. And the Lord that can answer me, that same God is for you. He will answer your prayer. Because we have the conquering power of the glorious one over all our afflictions. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40, and in Isaiah chapter 40, we're reading from verse 28, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 
28, it says, Art thou not known? Art thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. In verse 29, it says, He giveth power to the faint. If you are fainting there, if you are sickly there, the power and the strength for healing and health, for dominion and deliverance, he gives you right now. It's the same God, the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's the same healer. It's the same Savior, Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. It's the same helper. It's the same strengthener. The Lord that cannot change is promises. Word that cannot change is power that cannot change. It says, He giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might he increases strength and then in verse 31 in verse 31 it says but they that wait upon the Lord that doesn't, that doesn't mean to you can you ought to wait for one hour three hours six hours and you know Isaiah had spoken to Ezekiah and he had said set your house in order for you will die and I say was going out. He was still in the court around there while Ezekiah waited upon the Lord and he didn't run after him. He was not shivering and he was not, you know, picking this and picking that. As he waited upon the Lord, those few minutes, God spoke to Isaiah, go back and tell him, I have heard your prayer. Even tonight, as we are waiting there and you say, Lord, I need your salvation. I need your restoration. I need your healing. I need your deliverance, he'll tell me to come back to you and tell you your prayers have been answered. Because he that waited upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You will not faint in Jesus' name. New power, new strength, new authority, and renewal comes to your life tonight in Jesus' Jesus' name. And we're looking at Isaiah chapter 11, and we're reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 11, and we're reading from verse 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, and it shall be it, sh and, and to it shall the gentle seek, and its rest shall be glorious. He'll give you a glorious rest tonight. Isaiah chapter 41, and I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41, reading from verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. It, there, are many th there are many things that make us afraid. And in life, one time or the other, somebody should have been afraid. That's why we couldn't take the decision we ought to take. We were afraid. That's why we couldn't go where the Lord wanted us to go. We were afraid. That's why we couldn't do what the Lord told us to do. We were afraid. If I did that, this might be the consequence. And then it will scatter my life. Be not afraid. Nothing will scatter your life. Many things he told us to do. He said, correct this in your life. And then we corrected it. And we thought life has come to an end. I remember when I was much younger. I was at university at that time. And I'd helped some people because, by the grace of God, I was good in mathematics. And I'm still, I'm still good in mathematics. If you want to test me, come. <laughs> can I tell you a, a good story? I'm still coming back to the other story. Can I tell you another good story? I went to Zimbabwe to have crusade and to have teaching teaching the Bible. And the person who had helped us in organizing that crusade, 
major part because of her position, a woman. She connected that, contacted, contacted that, and we had a great meeting. And then she whispered to our, um, our national overseer at that time. He said, I heard the pastor is uh, a mathematician. My child is completely down, and the education is about to stop because she didn't, uh, you know, understand uh, all these maths and everything. And he said, the national overseer called me and said, this woman said this for her daughter. Uh, do you still remember? Can you still teach? I said, take me there. And then I got, uh, you know, that child. And I said, where are you now in your studies in mathematics? And she told me. And then I said, this, 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 and all that. She said, I understand now. I didn't need to understand all this time. And then we went through some big, those few days, and that child just came to the positive side. I don't know whether she's a mathematician now, now or not, but that, that's a side story. I hope you students, are the students there tonight? Yeah. I am your teacher, you will do well. Yeah. And now, I'm talking about when I was at the university because I was good in maths. Uh, some people had asked me to take, you know, WIAC exam, uh, GC, uh, what do you call that? Uh, thank you uh, for them. And uh, so I said, all right, uh, they registered and all that. I went in and I took the exam for them and they got distinction. Two of them, two different years. But now I'm born again. I'm a child of God now. And the Lord reminded me what I had done. I needed to make a correction of that. I needed to turn that around. And uh, so I wrote. Uh, I didn't have to wait for somebody to prop me and encourage me and and push me and, and counsel me. The counseling was the counselor was on the inside because the word of God comes to you really in a clear manner. This is what to do, and this is the way what keep therein. And I wrote uh, letters to the you know examining body. This is what I've done. I was in the university already, and then the fear was coming. Aha, uh -huh, you're blown it. They're going to write to you, they're going to write to to the university and they're going to send you away but I waited you will see the glory of God and those people they wrote a letter back to me they said this new life you have keep to that new life and everything was all right and I came out they didn't throw me out of the university but I even made a first class leaving that university what I'm telling you is God said I am with thee Fear thee not, you will not be afraid in Jesus' name. The strength of the Lord will support you, and the power of the Lord will hold you up. I am thy God. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. The Lord will uphold you in Jesus' name. As you begin at this journey and as you go through this life, the life of Christ in man, nothing will send you back to the wilderness of sinning anymore in Jesus' name. When you keep at number three here. Number three is the confident prayer of the godly for an answer. The confident prayer. When we come to pray before the Lord and we pray for salvation, we're confident because he told us to come. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord Jesus Christ will pay for our sins and he has done that. And now whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we come confidently. Not only that, by his stripes we're healed. We're coming for healing, and as we come for the healing, we come confidently and boldly. He cannot fail. His power is still the same, even until today. And we come to pray confidently. There is maybe an evil spirit, an evil power tormenting your life, and he says he is our deliverer, because 
because he died, he gave himself that he might deliver us from this present evil world. And as uh, we come to him, uh, we're not wondering, will he deliver? Will he not deliver? Will he save? Will he not save? Will he forgive? Will he not forgive? He forgives. And because he forgives, we come confidently and he will answer your prayer. And he will answer my prayer. And you and I together joining with the same request you are making, it will answer our prayer. It will give you the solution to the problem and to the challenge you have in Jesus' name. Uh, look at Isaiah chapter 65, I'm reading from verse 24. It says, and it shall come to pass. Amen. That before they call, I will answer. Before they call, I will answer. I was waiting for amen. And while they are yet speaking, while they are, they are not even finished, not even finished, while they are yet speaking, I will hear. From this time now to the time, don't wait now for the final amen today, because while they are yet speaking, I will answer. We had a crusade at the National Stadium in Lagos some years ago. And, um, you know, people came from all over. Some were blind, some were lame. This particular child that the mother brought, this particular child that had a peculiar problem. This particular child that had a kind of problem I've never heard of before. One leg had bone, the other leg did not have any bone. It was like rubber. And any time he was moving around, it will wind the boneless leg around wood because it was just like that. Flesh without any bone. And so we were praying. We closed our eyes. And I was saying, Oh Lord, answer the people. Oh Lord, do this. Oh Lord, do that. We had not even finished the prayer. The mother started shout shouting because while we were still praying, God created bone into that leg. And the boy threw away the stick, and the boy started walking majestically with his two feet, bone, everywhere now. And the miracle had been done. Let me come back to this. It shall come to pass in your life. That before you call, heaven is paying attention now. I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. On this final day, miracle, wonders, salvation, healing, deliverance, the manifestation of the power of God while we're still speaking. You're going home with wonder of wonders tonight. You're going home with salvation. Going home with restoration. Going home with total, complete healing in your body. Amen! It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. This is your chance. And this is your time. This is the final day. You must not go back home with your load, the guilt, the condemnation of sin. Because it comes now to save. It says, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. And whoever you are, whatever you have done, no matter how far you have gone in darkness and in sin, he is the one that speaks in righteousness, and he is mighty to save. His bowed and eyes closed. You want that salvation of the Lord. 
that will forgive your sin, that will cleanse your sin, that will remove your sin, that will give you a real salvation that comes with righteousness. You raise up your hand, praise the Lord, God bless you there. Your salvation has now come. This final day will not pass you by. Salvation is available here. Raise up that hand, raise up that hand and say, Lord, here I am. I want your salvation. Lord, here I am. I want your salvation. Raise up that hand, raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand, God bless you there. God bless you there. You can stand up. You can stand up and say, Lord, here am I. This day, it's going to be the day of my salvation, the day I repent, and the day I believe, and the day I call upon the Lord, and his salvation comes to me. Stand up as you are raising up your hand, online, over the radio, over the television, anywhere you are. You're willing to turn over your life completely without reservation unto the Lord. He wants to bring you that salvation now. And he wants to turn your life, life around for the better. And he wants to give you the grace and the strength to say, Come what may, I'll follow the Lord till the end of my life. Grace available, love available, strength available, and the welcome of the Lord available. God bless you for standing and praying for you. Now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. And we bless your name because you are the God that cannot fail. You are the God that has called us. And as we respond and come, you are mighty to save. Save your people in Jesus' name. And I pray that all the bad habits of the past, all the evil things of the past, you break everything everything, cleanse everything, wash everything away, and make them as white as snow. I pray, Lord, the joy of salvation, the peace that comes with salvation, and the righteousness, the assurance that comes with salvation, grant unto everyone right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, there be the Spirit of God witnessing in their hearts, they are saved, they are restored, they are now born again, their children of God. Confirm it, Lord, in every heart there, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there, and they will give you the usual sleeves will give to those who have just given their lives to the Lord, so that as you feel that correctly, we may be able, we'll be able to keep on helping you. And then after this session, I'll come back to assure you and to minister to you of your healing that you must have today. Amen. We call on our moderating overseer to see us, uh, to help us in this session. Thank you and God bless you. Please keep standing. Our counselors, please go to them. And uh, wherever you are, please uh, the collect a slip and a package from the counselors. If you are here at the Alpha location or in any of the centers that are connected as congregations, the counselors are coming to you there. Um, they will give you a slip. You will fill those slips with the information that is required. Uh, your name, your address, your telephone number, all those things, supply them so that we'll be able to be of further assistance to you in your newfound faith. And for those who are uh, connected uh, through social media, uh, you have a, a link displayed on your screen uh, through which you can equally uh, supply the information that we'll use to uh, be of more assistance to you. Uh, this, uh, you can see a link there gckhq.org slash connect. Uh, you can use that to, uh, to supply the information that is needed. Those on the radio and television, uh, there is a telephone number also that is displayed on the TV there on your screen. Plus 234-9196. Four, 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 
9263 plus 234-915-444-9263. Uh, with that, you'll be able to uh, supply information, give us your, telef uh, your telephone number, your name, your address. Uh, if you are writing on the uh, slips, please, preferably, you write in capital letters. If, you have, if they have not come to you, please indicate so that they'll be able to uh, reach you, give you the slip, so that you'll be able to supply this information. Write very clearly so that uh, we'll be able to uh, read the information that is on the, on the slip you are completing. Uh, please, our, our counselors, do that very quickly. And then um, once you are through, uh, our Father in the Lord, the convener of GCK, is still coming again to uh, reach out uh, to us with prayer for miracles. And I want to assure you that today, being the last day, you will never go without your miracle. He has assured us, and I am telling you, you have a testimony. So uh, please, our counselors, do that very quickly. Let's be sure that you have um, col collected the names of uh, the people, that's the, uh, the slips that, they, that, that you have given to them. Please do that very quickly. Our Father and the Lord will be coming very shortly. And uh, you will uh, you, you, you be expecting that the, uh, the, the Lord will touch you in a special way. The miracles you need tonight will come your way in Jesus' name. Our counselors, I believe, you have done that. I believe you have done that. If you have uh, finished with that, our Father in the Lord is coming now with the prayer for miracles. And I want you to believe God. You know, to, tonight being the last night, I can assure you, you will receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Our Father in the Lord is coming now, and you will receive your blessings. Praise the Lord. Your answer has come. You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand where you have the challenge. He knows you there, he sees you there, and the answer now is on the way. And before the final amen, look at it, he has done it. Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have any challenge, any problem, any, any, any problem, any challenge. And this is the day of demonstration and manifestation. Father, in Jesus' name. Well, thank you and bless your name tonight for your goodness, for your power, and for your faithfulness. You cannot fail. You will not fail. I'm asking now, Lord, touch everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Deliver, heal everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ came for this purpose that he might destroy all the works of the devil. And I pray here to the right, to the left, to the center, to the front, everywhere, anywhere now, online, in the media, television, radio, anywhere, I pray the work of the devil will be destroyed in every life now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, deformity, you will correct. Deformity, you will remove. Sickness, you will take away. And all the things that are working about in the body, I command them come out in Jesus' name. I'm asking, Lord, that your mighty power will move everywhere. You are not a partial God. You do for A, you do for B, you do for C, you do for everyone. Therefore, Lord, I pray that you manifest your healing power in everyone right now in Jesus' name. That insanity, that brain problem, that demonic problem, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, for all those things walking about in the body, destroying their peace of mind, tearing them apart and torturing their lives. I command that evil power, 
come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any kind of a heart problem or breathing problem and the palpitations there and the, the, the thing as if your heart will jump out, I command there will be peace in your system in Jesus' name. And I pray that all the anxiety and all the worry and all the fear, as if life is coming to an end, Lord, I pray, restore total health to everyone in Jesus' name. I'm asking, oh Lord, that the physical problem tangible that people feel and the pain in their body, I pray, Lord, all the pains vanish away in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, the hardness in that part of the body, in the tummy on that right hand side, I pray, Lord, you touch them right now and remove that hardness in that part of the body in Jesus' name. I pray that all the stiffness of the joints and all the pain of arthritis in their joints, in the elbows, in the shoulder, in the knee, even at the waist and at the ankle, Lord, I pray, lay your mighty hand on them and heal them perfectly. Make them whole in Jesus' name. Cancer, whatever stage of cancer that is, I pray that the mighty power of God will take that cancer away instantaneously in Jesus' name. Also, you are healed in Jesus' name. That I'm near, I pray the Lord will touch that I'm near and you'll remove that I'm near. You'll be free, totally free in Jesus' name the fibroid and any other swelling in the body, Lord, touch them by your mighty power for a definite miracle. Fibroid, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, like the child I spoke about, that you created bone where there's no bone, or any missing part of the body, whether in the bone, whether in the, in the stomach, whether it's kidney, or whatever it is, any missing part of the body, create that now and supply in everyone in Jesus' name. Dumb person, speak out in Jesus' name. Deaf person, hear in Jesus' name. And the dim sight and the blindness, the cutter, the chroma, whatever it is, or it's in, at the back of the, the retina, I'm asking, Lord, you know where the problems are. Touch them, transform them, heal them in Jesus' name. I pray now for everyone, everyone from the top of there to the tip of the toe. I pray that the virtue of healing will pass through everybody right now. Everywhere here, everywhere online, everywhere in the congregation that are congregated, listening together, miracle everywhere now in Jesus' name. Power manifestation everywhere now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray nobody will go without their healing, without their deliverance, and without the manifesting of the power of God in their lives. Touch them, heal them, deliver them, set them free. Confirm the miracle in every life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. It is done. I said it is done. You see the healing there. And as you see the healing, you come out so we can have a glorious time of testimony sharing tonight. The moderating over service. The, the Lord has done. And the whole church said, Amen. Father, we thank you because we know you have answered our prayers. We are prayed here and all over where the workers' meeting is going on now, we have all prayed. And Lord, we pray that you'll say amen and yes with assurance to every prayer we have prayed for our leaders in Jesus' name. We're asking the Lord, you back them up. The power of heaven will never leave them. The grace of God will multiply in their lives. Brighter vision you'll give to them for your work in Jesus' name. Make them stronger. Make them mightier in the word of God. 
and make them, Lord, sustained in the grace of God that will move them from place to place, and this work will continue to expand in their lives, in their hands, in Jesus' name. And those of us who are workers, I pray you strengthen us too. And I pray, Lord, tonight you speak to every heart. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can see now we're coming to Hebrews chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse different kinds of miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. That's the passage we're looking at tonight. The writer of the epistle to the Hebrews emphasized the fact that this was not the first time the people were hearing. And it says, we ought to give heed to the things we have heard. We need to give earnest heed to the things we have heard. We need to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. It's so easy to hear and allow you to slip away from us. It's so easy to hear and forget. It's so easy to hear and not think about it. It's so easy to hear and ignore. It's so easy to hear and we're not calculating, we're not planning, we're not building our lives on what we have heard. And so he said, we must, we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard and not allow them, he's talking about a lot of things here, the things we have heard. As you have been in the church, in this deep Life Bible church for such a long time, and you begin to recollect, what have I heard? The things you have heard, lest at any time, it's not just at the church here, when we're in the meeting, at any time, and times come in our lives, maybe times of adversity, and may be times of prosperity. It may be time of getting married. It may be time of having children. It may be time we're celebrating something. It may be time of achievement at any time. That's the time we need to recollect the words we have heard. That's the time we need to bring in the word we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them sleep. And then it says, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, it said, how shall we escape? If we neglect, if we ignore, if we let it just lie fallow, if we just overlook it, we're not rejecting it, we're not contradicting it. We're not saying it's not true. We're not saying we don't believe it. We just neglect it. We just ignore it. And it says, how shall we escape? If we neglect, if we reject, if we ignore, so great salvation, great salvation, plunged by the great God of heaven, great salvation, purchased by the great sacrifice of Jesus Christ, great salvation revealed to us by the great sevenfold spirit of God, great salvation that is great enough to lift us from earth and take us to heaven, great salvation that is able to remove the greatest of mountains in our lives, the great sin in our lives, great salvation that's able to set us free from the power, the greatest power of Satan, of the enemy. How shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, 
which at the first began to be spoken of by the Lord. He said that the salvation we're talking about is not a new kind of salvation. It's not a new generation of salvation. 